Well, if you thought the world being in literal lockdown during a major pandemic was crazy enough, we haven't seen anything yet. You might have heard of this through the news lately, but in case you're just hearing it for the first time, Google and Apple are working together to make a contact tracing application that could help to mitigate the spread of the novel coronavirus. If you don't know what contact tracing is, it's basically a process used to determine who might have been infected by the coronavirus and the people that the infected person has come in contact with and also requires that the people who are or could be infected are quarantined or at the very least practicing social distancing. The goal of the app is to help alleviate the spread of the novel coronavirus via a simple process that doesn't compromise privacy or security. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how the app works, the various phases that the app will be going through, the various processes that the user will undertake if they're exposed or infected, and why this app will be very beneficial to the general public as a whole. So without taking any more of your time, let's get right into this video. Hey everyone, my name is Dojo Mojo, and back to what I was saying before, Google and Apple are working on a contact tracing app with no official name, by the way, and the goal is to integrate the contact tracing protocol into the Android and iOS systems and make it much easier for users to lessen their contact with infected or exposed people and slow the transmission of dangerous pathogens like coronavirus. So basically how the app works is that it uses Bluetooth LE or low energy signals for contact tracing. When two people come in contact with each other, their phones exchange an anonymous identification key recording their encounter. If one of the persons later is diagnosed with COVID-19, they can share that information through the app, which will notify the other people that they came in contact with during the day that they have coronavirus. The personal information or location data will not be revealed when using this app. Apple and Google are planning to release this app in two phases, starting with the API coming in mid-May. This API will make sure that iOS and Android apps can trace their users regardless of what OS that they're using, but it'll be restricted to apps from public health officials. During these phases, you'll need to install one of the approved apps to enlist in the program, but there isn't any word as to who will be providing these apps at the moment. Right now though, you'll have to install a lot of third-party apps to take full advantage of the program, but Google and Apple are working on a long-term solution to make things much simpler. So following the API, Google and Apple are planning on including the contact tracing feature into Android and iOS respectively. The goal is to have it be something that the users can opt in for in the phone settings, and then if they're exposed, their phone will urge them to install an app that will provide them information on the symptoms and also quarantine and self-isolation methods that they could take. This does bring up a few questions though, like what will the notifications look like and will individual governments use this for local tracking, but all of which I will discuss in my follow-up video that's coming pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. The Bluetooth LE feature has been in Android since 2012 and in iOS since the iPhone 4S. So unless you've got a really old phone, this is guaranteed to work in your device. If you like what you're seeing or hearing, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this in your feed. Also, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section regarding the video, information I missed, or just something about my room. I won't judge. So what actually happens when you're infected? Well, if you test positive for the coronavirus, the last 14 days of your anonymous identification key are uploaded to a server. Other people's phones will automatically download the key list and if there's a matching key in their history, you'll get an exposure notification. Providing the anonymous identification key is completely voluntary and will not be forced upon you. There is potential for trolls to use to create false alarm. So to combat this, many people speculate that Google and Apple will be using the current system that verifies that people actually have coronavirus. But as of now, there's been no response to this concern from these companies. So what happens if you're exposed? Well, if people are sharing their data as described before, 
your phone will check the list once a day and look for any key matches. Then notify you if there are. Google will alert you and then tell you that you've been exposed to the virus, and then send you a link to the source that goes through all the symptoms and necessary quarantine guidelines. When assessing the exposure risk process, the more you've been around the affected or exposed person, the greater risk. So new data is registered into the system every five minutes. The user can receive information directly or be offered a general risk assessment without the exact number increasing anonymity. Now, will this contact tracing app that Apple and Google are planning to release replace the current contact tracing system that we do manually? Well, actually no, because the measures aren't in place for the app to completely take over and there are some loopholes in the system that allow for many faults within its structure, but it allows for an easy way for people to stay safe outside, be it an intuitive system that doesn't compromise privacy and is very convenient. If you're interested in viewing the sources that I've used, they're all linked in the description below. If you prefer to watch other videos that talk about the same thing, there are also links to those videos that talk about the same thing in more detail in the description as well. If you're still interested in content about the Google and Apple contact tracing application, there's going to be a follow-up video coming after this one talking about the uh, major concerns from the press about um, this application and what it means for the future of contact tracing digitally. All right, everyone, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to share this video if you have other people interested in the same topic. And this is all you're going to get from me today. This is Dojo Mojo signing out.